Morning, students and faculty of WLA. My name is John Learman. I'm the pastor at St. Peter's in Zion and Theresa. Thank you for the opportunity to share God's word with you today. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's that time of year again, that time that brings joy and happiness to nine out of 10 women and absolute dread to nine out of 10 men. It's Hallmark Christmas movie season. You're probably familiar with the type. Those are the, the cheesy made-for-TV movies that are produced in, in mass quantity and with very low budgets, but for some reason, tons of people just can't resist them. And the ongoing joke about those movies is that once you've seen one of them, you've seen all of them because they all follow a very predictable pattern. There's a young, attractive woman played by a D-list actress who leaves the big city to, to go home to her small hometown for Christmas just a few weeks before the holidays to help her family save their dime business. And along the way, she meets her old high school sweetheart who just happens to be recently widowed. He helps her save the business, which is usually a toy store or a Christmas tree farm. They fall in love, and then the movie ends with them sharing a nice, wholesome kiss uh, right in front of the, the town's Christmas display as it's lighting up, all while surrounded by fake snow and trees that still have the leaves on them because the movie was filmed in July. And for some reason, lots of people love these movies despite the predictable plot line because it, I suppose it puts them in the Christmas spirit. Or think about movies about Santa. Those movies are always the same too. They have a character who denies that Santa exists and is usually some kind of a Christmas Scrooge. And then there's another character, usually a child, who loves Christmas and believes that Santa is real. At the end of the movie, as Santa flies overhead with his sleigh and his reindeer, that Scrooge character is proven to be a fool because he didn't believe in him. And then he perhaps finds a newfound love for Christmas. Now, I'm not going to say anything more about Santa being real or not. I'll let you students have that conversation with your parents at home. Well, there are many people in our world who deny the existence of the main character in the real story of Christmas, Jesus. Or in a more general way, they deny the existence of God. Of course, we call those types of people atheists, but the Bible calls them something else. It calls them fools. Psalm 14 verse 1 states, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. There are literally millions in our country who are fools in that way, yet despite their unbelief, just about all of them still celebrate Christmas. Did you ever wonder why? I suppose it's mostly because in many ways Christmas has been secularized in our culture. For many people, Christmas is just an opportunity to take a break from work or school, to, to buy and receive some presents, to, to spend some time with friends and family, and to drink some peppermint-flavored coffee. Nothing religious, nothing about Jesus. That's how a fool celebrates Christmas. But the thing is, it's so easy for us, us to get sucked into to the same thing. And think about how much time we spend preparing for Christmas, doing things that have nothing to do with that child born in Bethlehem. The countless hours spent searching online or in stores for that perfect gift. The planning of family gatherings, the, the baking, the decorating, and yes, maybe even the watching of Hallmark Christmas movies. Not that any of those things are wrong or bad. We all do them. But how much of our preparation for Christmas is, is really about Jesus? Or here's a more even direct question. If a stranger were to observe us going about our activities during this holiday season, how much different will we actually look compared to an atheist? My point is, let's not celebrate Christmas like a fool. Instead, let's prepare to find Jesus in the manger, and let's prepare to see him descending on the clouds of heaven in glory on that last day. Do that by, by taking some time to listen to the words of John the Baptist and examine those crooked paths of sin that need to be straightened out in your life. Take some time to remember that that baby born in Bethlehem, that he is also your Savior 
who carried your sins to the cross and won your full and complete forgiveness. And take some time to remember that you are a baptized child of God who has been clothed with the white robes of Christ's perfect righteousness. Take some time to remember that you are a redeemed believer who will one day stand before our judge, having been, been declared innocent and fit for heaven. Now, this Christmas season, don't feel guilty if you do find yourself doing many of the same things that, that everyone else does. Buy those presents, bake those cookies, spend some time with your friends and family if you are able to. Hey, go ahead and watch hours of Hallmark Christmas movies if that's your thing. But don't celebrate Christmas like a fool. Come and worship your newborn king. Keep the focus on the most precious gift that you have ever been given, the Savior born in Bethlehem and the perfect eternity that is yours through him. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you, as always, for the gift of your Son. During this busy time of year, help us to keep our hearts centered on the truths of your gospel. Bless our celebrations of our Savior's birth and make our souls prepared to join you in heaven. Amen. God's blessings to you all.